right, we should be live on YouTube. And we got to bring Hunter back to this video here because Skype's not our friend. Dan? Okay. Hopefully we won't have to do this too many times. What's going on YouTube, Facebook? RDAP Dan here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic week. And as you can see, we have Hunter Moores joining us. He's going to talk up, a little bit today about his prison experience and just a little bit about what he kind of did to get himself into trouble without going into too much detail. Because uh, I think as Hunter's told me, he's actually writing a book. So we're going to save some of those details for the book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how you doing, Hunter? Good. How are you, Dan? Appreciate you joining with us today. Of course. Um, so, Hunter, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and a little bit about how you kind of got yourself winded up with the uh, federal government. And, and if Oof. we lose you, we're going to let you finish talking before we restart Skype because we can still hear you. Okay. Yeah, just give me a heads up. Um, well, uh, a little bit about me is that I, I guess you could say I'm an internet entrepreneur. Um I started the website, Is Anyone Up? It was actually a nightlife website that morphed into this other thing. Um, and it's uh, more popular, popular what, I don't know if I'm using the word right. It's more known as revenge porn. Um, what happened was uh, me and a few friends just wanted to see a couple girls we knew naked. And we all just started uploading to... Um, a nightlife website that I had, which was, is anyone up? Um, it went from just me and a couple of friends to 40 to 70 million people a month looking at it. So, um, yeah. And then it sparked a, a big conversation and legislation, um, that was eventually passed in Australia, Canada, the UK and parts of the United States. And, um, that ended me in prison for purchasing pictures of people that were relevant on the internet. Um, and I didn't know that they were hacked until later. And the federal government used uh, someone that my company purchased pictures from to testify against me. And I wound up with 30 months in federal prison. So we're going to talk a little bit about your federal prison sentence in a second, because uh, that's kind of when I met you right, right before you went into federal or you found that's when you met me right before you went into federal prison. Pretty that's much right. Right. As I had kind of gotten out of federal prison in 2015. Um, yep. So w when you were doing this at the time, it was kind of crazy because when you reached out to me, I had no idea. I had no idea who you were because you just had a. a like a, a hidden screen name where you never told me your real name or anything. So we actually <laughs> started talking yeah. for quite a few weeks, maybe even a couple of months before, but the charges that you ended up getting, what, what was the actual official charge that ended up, or what did they try to charge you with initially? And what did you end up getting charged with in the end? If you can remember, I had like 15 charges of aggravated identity theft and then conspiracy to have uh, unlawful access to a secured computer. So um, I ended up, I started with all of those and then worked my way down to uh, agri or conspiracy to, to have un a lawful access to a secured computer. Um, and then one count of aggravated identity theft. So yeah, that, I forgot about that one. But yeah, so one had a six month mandatory minimum and then the other one was like two years. So I ended up with 30 months. So prior to this happening, you already knew that. How did you get? How did you get tagged with the name? For a while there, everyone was saying you were known as like the most hated man in America. Which <laughs> I guess it's a cool yeah. name, you know, if if you're in the situation you're in. But but who, do you? I'm still wondering to this day who created that. Did that come from a specific like news article or? Yeah, what happened was Rolling Stone traveled with me while I did shows back in 2012. Um, they toured with me for a little bit. Uh, it was uh, this lady named Alexis, or I don't know. I guess that's irrelevant. Anyway, it was just a play on words or my infamous uh, reputation that I had on the internet. And it was just ta completely taken out of context. So the title was The Most Hated Man on the Internet, Where Is He Now? Um, which was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be taken serious. It was act, the piece 
was actually about how loved I am and uh, not, you know, not to like, you know, <laughs> talk right, myself to, up. Right, to your but, audience. Yeah, but I had a huge following, if you if you guys didn't, don't know who I am, but uh, almost a cult, I guess you could say, that was um, what people tended to call it. But it was, um, it, the whole article was about how loved I was. It wasn't like, I, you, you know, how hated I was. It was actually a contrast to what the title was. So um, obviously the media, you know, selling clickbait took that out of context and ran with that and i was sure did yeah so so i've noticed a lot of people that are in in spotlights or whether they're famous or infamous or whatever direction you want to go with that there always seems to be a combination of of character that they portray and that they are behind the scenes and somebody that you know you, you become kind of this visual icon and you maintain a character and then there's a different side of people that a lot of other people don't get to see of course how much of that plays into role with you where where some of this was character and some of this was was not really like hunter more behind <laughs> behind closed doors having dinner with mom yeah. and dad of course um i'd say i, I couldn't give you a, an exact percentage but um obviously uh obviously the lifestyle that i portrayed to live which was this dude doing like five eight balls a day of cocaine and drinking a gallon of vodka um isn't you know based in reality no one could really keep that up but um you know there there's parts of me uh, or my personality that were that in certain moments like if i was doing a show or something um you know i guess that part of me would is actually a part of me but the rest of it is just not based in reality most entertainers it's entertainment we're entertaining so we are playing a character um you know i have tattoos and i I look like a scumbag but in reality i'm you know i got a big ass fat cat that i love to death and i don't really like leaving the house i've got anxiety um (laughs) you know i like to keep to myself but um yeah so a lot of people didn't understand that this is a character this is a role it's all about numbers it's a numbers game you know i'm selling advertisement i'm selling music i'm you know selling merchandise whatever i'm doing to monetize that character i'm doing but um you're running you know, a business run, it's a business at the end of the day so a lot of people don't understand that and that was you know uh, something that was used against me when i was um fighting the feds and which was crazy to me i was like how do you not not understand that this is a character which well i had to actually let that go as a as part of my defense which took me about 18 months to realize that during pretrial but um you know they're they use my character against me and my business against me um so yeah so I know everybody here has a lot of questions. And if you guys got questions that you want to ask Hunter while he's here on the show, if you want to post it in either, uh, Chez, you're watching Facebook as well, right? So we got CJ over there watching Facebook feeds. And he's watching. Oh, hey, CJ. <laughs> sorry for ignoring your emails, dude. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for ignoring the emails. Today. Yeah. But um, if you have questions that you want to ask Hunter while he's live on the show, post them in the room. And mm-hmm. it's up to Hunter what he, what he decides to discuss and what he decides not to discuss. Uh, we're not we're not here to go too deep into Hunter's past, but for those of you that maybe don't know exactly who Hunter Moore is, I, I felt like it was a little bit important to talk about that. So if you need to know more about uh, who Hunter Moore is, I suggest jump on Google and really just look him up. And as you can see, Skype jumped off again, so we're going to go ahead and bring Hunter back on here, which means you have to hang okay. up on and call him back. So what we're going to be talking about is how he ended up dealing with his anxiety and pressures of of getting ready to go to federal prison. Um, you back with us, Hunter? Oh, shit. Skype. Skype's not liking us today, guys. Give me one minute here to get Skype back up. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk to Hunter here in a second about how he actually dealt with facing a federal prison sentence. Sorry about there, that. You there, Dan? Yeah. All right. So we, this may happen a couple times, guys. I don't know what's going on with Skype. It's a, it's been a really shady connection the last shady shady connection the last couple of days. <laughs> so Hunter, tell us a little bit. You said you have a lot of anxiety. You don't like to leave the house. Has this become <laughs> yeah. has this become more so after, or were you like this even before? 
Um, I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm saying that you know, kind of just like you know, obviously, I leave the house, I have a social life. I'm not a you know a hobbit, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know, like I do like to keep to myself. I'm not, I'm not like you know what I was selling is what I was trying to explain. But right. yeah, I um, I do have anxiety. I think everybody has a certain level of anxiety, but mine's probably a little bit uh, more than most people. I'm a control freak, so um, which is the worst type of personality or i guess some sort of disorder i guess you could say for when you're fighting the feds because they take your control of everything your life is not even yours anymore i mean you may you know have control of when you fall asleep at night but at the end of the day nothing's yours so um that was the the hardest thing to come to grips with while you know being in you know going through pre-trial and you know, ultimately being sent to prison. Tell us about when you either found out you were a target. I don't know if they ever told you you were a target or did you just get <clears> straight <throat> indicted and scoot over just a little bit. You're slow. Oh, sorry. Going for, there you go. Sorry um, about that. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you found out you were, you were in some sort of trouble. <laughs> well, I always, uh, I always kind of knew about the beginning of 2011. They were, uh, always raiding my servers. We were always hopping around from different server company, server company. They're raiding my servers constantly. They were looking for something, which I, I, you know, as a control freak, I dotted my I's and crossed my T's in my business, what I thought. Um, you know, I had to create and build this platform from, you know, being a retarded, you know, high school dropout and uh, taking in all these submissions and all the other illegal content that came with it. So. You know, I had a lawyer. I had. I thought I was, you know, on top of my shit. So I was very confident. You know, whatever they were looking for, they weren't going to find. But um, I, I started knowing in the beginning of 2011. And then when I got my paperwork in the halfway house, I, you know, it tells you when the offense was committed. And it and it said at the end of 2011, it was like whatever the date was. So, um, you know, just kind of reconfirm that. So the day that it happened, the day that you got arrested... And yeah. officially arrested. Where, where were you? T take us through that moment. Uh, I had just gotten off a plane. I did a show in Buffalo, New York, and I had flown back. And uh, I was I was just at home, and uh, I smoked a huge blunt. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> it's going to be a good year or something. I remember laying in bed, and I was tweeting about Justin Bieber because he just gotten arrested. I know this is retarded. But uh, I remember just feeling good, and I had my big old fat cat next to me, and I was just chilling. And then it was probably like 3 in the morning like when I fell asleep. I woke up about three hours later super high, and uh, the feds were all standing around me. <laughs> really? Were you home alone? or? Uh yeah i don't i don't remember to be honest with you so they were they were standing all around you and they put you in handcuffs right then and there they were like yeah get dressed and i was like what the fuck like i just didn't understand not only was i high and completely out of it i was like i had a god complex at this time too so i you know i was on the top of my game i was making retarded money it was just it, it just didn't compute in my brain like what the fuck are you guys doing here like it just didn't it was weird, man. I don't know how to explain it. But um, uh, they were just like, hey, you remember when we uh, raided you a couple of years ago? Well, yeah, we're here for that. And then they took my shoelaces out of my shoe once I put them on and then uh, walked me downstairs into this police car. And I was like, so am I going to prison right now? <laughs> and they were like, oh, no, you'll be back out. And I was just like, okay. And that was it was just kind of a blur, man. It, it was it was surreal. How long did it? How long did it take to process you before you got released back out on uh, on bond? It was about two days. It went pretty quick, I guess, but it was probably the longest two days of my life. You know, sitting in county, not knowing what's going on, surrounded by all these weird people. And what year was this? Two thousand January two thousand fourteen. Okay, so January two thousand fourteen was when it kind of. When it became real, you got arrested. You spent a couple of days in county jail, got released. From the yeah. time that you got released, it was for that was what January two thousand fourteen, and you didn't go to prison till uh, January sixteen. January sixteen. So basically yeah. two years. Yeah. Two. Years. What was that two years like? Let's talk about those two years. 
Well, uh, it was, <laughs> like I said, I was a control freak, so, or I am a control freak still. Um, it was probably like, I've never had cancer. I've had family members that had cancer. This is the best way I can explain it to people who've not gone, uh, you know, not gone through something like similar to this. It's, uh, it's like just this cloud that's over your head it's, and, you know, my first plea deal was 14 years, like, or 13, nine months or whatever the fuck it was. And, uh, you know, it was just like, oh, well, this is cool. I'm just going to kill myself. Like, I, I, I'd never been suicidal or any kind of crazy thought before, but it was like, it was the worst fucking experience of my life. But it, 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 it was a huge learning experience. So, you know, I, I, uh, I had the worst pretrial officer. So that, that made it even 10 times worse. Like I felt like other people were treated better than I was. So it, it was like, a, a, it compounded with, you know, like, oh, I'm treated unfairly. They but took were, my whole life away. Were you, you know? still, were you still having the God complex? Were you, let's just say, were you an asshole oh my while you were on trial? Did you <laughs> oh, deserve yeah. to get kind of treated like a jerk while you were on pretrial? Was it coming? Um, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, honest. I mean, I don't, other people that have had success in their life, um, you know, not that I'm a fucking billionaire or some shit. Sorry, I'm cussing a lot. I only know like so many words, YouTube. but, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's, it, you know, I, I just couldn't put, wrap my head around it. Like I just wanted to shake these people. Like what the, what are you guys serious? Like I, I, I just, it was weird, man. I just couldn't. I couldn't fathom like these people don't understand. So about nine to almost nine months to a year, it was, I was a fucking dick. Like I just couldn't, I just couldn't get it. You know what I mean? And I didn't think anything was going to come of it, but I did. It was, uh, it was miserable, man. Was your attorney telling you from the beginning that you were going to be looking at prison time? Well, uh, I had, I had retained an attorney like two two to three years prior, I just gave this random person I found off the internet, a federal attorney, when I first, when they first seized one of my servers, I gave, I just had him on retainer. He was the worst person ever. I, I tried to fight him like t two weeks after I got out of jail. <laughs> he told, he told me and my parents to shut up when they were asking questions. So that, that he, it was, that was a horrible experience on top of it. But um, my next attorney, he told me off the bat, he was, he who had he, he had dealt with higher um you know clients that you know were semi famous or whatever um that man you're looking at five to seven he told he was like just be prepared for five to seven so i was like fuck so that that was like what really brought Reality. me to earth yeah so so while yeah. you were absorbing these thoughts that you may be going to prison for five to seven years did you know anything about what prison was actually going to be like? Well, no, because like all you see on TV is state stuff, like, and especially high security state stuff. Um, you know, and you, you have in your mind like this. Really, it's just like propaganda of like what the prison system is actually like, and you know, it's just entertainment that you're seeing on TV. Um, so obviously, I'm like, what? I gotta join a gang? Like, I gotta, you know, start working out? <laughs> you know, I gotta learn jujitsu? I gotta do something <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, to protect my anus? Like, I didn't know what was going on, so it was how, just whole. How yeah. is this on your parents? I mean, I've had the awesome experience of of having several conversations with your mom. Um, never spoke to your dad. Heard a lot about your dad. Uh, your dad seemed to be a little bit more letting your mom, he had a lot of the questions, but your mom would be the one to voice them. Yeah. Um, how, how does your parents handle this? Because I know you're very close with your mom. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's like, uh, I don't, I don't know how it is for somebody, uh, you know, uh, daughter or son to go through this, but you're, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's this like feeling like you're going through the same thing. Cause I'm living with them. They're, they're there with my lawyer. I mean, there's probably feels like they're going to prison also. So, I mean, I, yeah, that would, that would be something you'd have to ask her, but you know, they, they, I mean, they, I mean, they're going through the same thing with you. They're feeling the same emotions and they're on that wild ride with you, you know? 
knowing knowing what you know now on how things work would you have done anything different prior to getting arrested prior to the indictment coming down the first time they came and you know knocked on your door and knocked on your servers is there anything you would have done differently knowing now what you ended up putting yourself through and ultimately what your family went through with it i know you have a lot to say about what really happened <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but now that you know how it works look let's just make this clear everybody that's watching this right now i'm not here advocating saying uh the government never does wrong the point the point of this channel is look at some point we all fucked up and made a mistake cj close the office door um, we all made a mistake and it's easy to say, oh, the government did this, the government did that. So I know Hunter had a lot of shit that happened to him that wasn't necessarily fair or even right. But for a lot of you that are watching this right now, you probably made choices or decisions that put yourself into the line of fire. So that's why you don't see me always uh, going on the defense and saying, the, you know, the government did this or the government did that because I don't want to give you guys another reason to not take accountability. For those of you that end up hiring us at some point in your in your preparation, it's important to be able to really own the parts that you did play a role in and not worry so much about how the government took advantage of you. Because if you're looking for a shorter sentence or you're trying to get into RDAP or you're focusing on your letters, you can't actively do that if you're also thinking they fucked me. So that's yeah. why I stay a little bit on the left side of that because of who we're dealing with. So I'm not here saying that you 100, I don't really think, honestly, I don't think you deserved to go to prison. My well, personal, uh, I, I've done a lot of research into it. Yes, watching your videos before <laughs> I knew who you were. Like if you yeah. Google you and you look at you on YouTube, you look like a straight piece of <laughs> shit. But I agree. that does not agree. mean you're supposed to go to prison. I didn't see what you were doing wrong other than just being <clears throat> a straight asshole. Um, exactly. And that's where people have to draw a line and say, yeah, maybe he was a scumbag. Or at least his 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 character was scumbagish, but that doesn't mean he deserves to go to prison because he's a jerk. Um, so you guys can draw your own conclusion on that. So now that's a lot to talk about. I know you've probably got so much to say, and I can't wait for you <laughs> yeah. to really have these conversations. Um, yeah, I mean, but I do agree with you. There there really is no point in you know trying to fight that battle with the government and even trying just. Did, I don't know if you lost me or not. Did you lose me? Yeah, you're still talking. I'll let you finish what okay. you're saying, and then we'll bring it back. Um, but yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you that all all of that worrying and you know what they're doing, what they did wrong to, or uh, you know how whatever they do it, did illegally to get you, and how they're wrong and you're right. I mean that that's beside the point. Like you need to focus on that goal of getting the least amount of time possible. So um, the the sooner you take. Um, you know, you, you accept what you did wrong or accountability for what you did. It makes the whole process so much easier. And that's what we're going to jump into and talk about in two seconds here. As soon as I bring your video back on. Okay. All right, Dan, you there? Yep. Okay. There turn, you go. Turn. All right. Sorry, cool. guys, I apologize. It's out of my control. All right. So now <laughs> Hunter's dealing with anxiety, has no idea. Tell us a little bit about how you found me. And ultimately, I think our, our relationship, the dynamic of it is pretty much why, I mean, you haven't done any type of interview since you've been released from prison. So no, this is it. Right I'm here. not paying Hunter. There's not a million dollar check going to Hunter for having his first. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. no. So, I just appreciate all the help, Dan. So explain a little bit to people how I was able, you and I working together, were able to prepare you for your journey going into prison and, and how that may have played a role on your uh, earlier release. Well, well, how I found you was that I was Googling white collar prison or sentencing or some, some sh something like that. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously I found Justin Perperny first and I would watch his videos and stuff, which it just didn't, not nothing against Justin Perperny, but it just didn't give me that you know, that thing I needed to just, get, you know, bring me level. So I'm not my pulling my hair out anymore. And then, um, you know, I would then bring myself around to Google, Google again and dig a little bit. And I found your video and it was actually, it, it had a quite a, 
quite a lot of views. I, I think it was like sixty thousand or something. I don't I don't remember. And I watched the whole thing, and it was like you explaining why you're going to prison. I think it was for your friends or something. I, I I'm sure it's still on your channel. You're talking about the video before I went to prison. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, like what you did and all that stuff. I think it was to your family or something. But uh, so I watched the whole thing, and I was like, oh fuck, like this dude, this dude. Uh, kind of going through something similar to me so i i subscribed to your channel and i was like a month i mean maybe even a year went by after i saw that and then i saw you uploaded a video and you got out and i was like holy shit and like you were all skinny and fit and all buff and you're taking your shirt off and showing people your muscles and i was like oh dude i gotta i gotta hit this dude up like so i, I just wrote you a message and um if you could talk to me and just answer basic questions um and that's that's where where this whole thing started yeah I, i've got those old emails somewhere maybe one day we'll we'll, we'll bring those old emails up and go through it but uh, yeah i had no idea who you were at this point you had never told me it was just i think your email was like the fish scale or 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 something of that nature it was just a, yeah, a, a login yeah. and we we had talked for several weeks and finally you know, you were getting to the point. We had spoke a little bit about what you need to do to get into RDAP. We spoke a little bit about what you need to do to prepare with your letters. We had really gone through a lot of different dynamics. And then you said, I'm going to tell you my name. And I remember to this day, you said, I'm going to tell you my name. Please don't Google me. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> you, there's no way you can ask somebody to do that. You, it's, it's like yeah, you're right. putting, putting a million I remember, dollars. I remember sitting there writing that too. <laughs> Yeah. So first thing I did was, uh, was, yeah, I Googled them. And honestly, I was thinking you were going to be a sex offender or something to that effect, because <laughs> that's, that's the average person. That's, okay. the type, that's the type of situation where yeah. somebody would say that. Um, yeah. You guys I know, shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh, but no, yeah. Look, I went through it too. While I was in prison, the, it was, it was a different world. It was a different time. It, I, I couldn't go sit there and have lunch and <laughs> yeah, you're right. a sex offender the way I do now. Um, yeah. but now I'm able to to uh, distance myself to the point where I can keep it strictly about their situation and and what they need to do to better themselves so when they get out, they don't repeat this offense and next time it's your child or my child. So that's to touch on that a little bit. But yeah. when I looked Hunter up and saw who he was, I was just like, Jesus Christ, this, this guy, I'm glad that he had this conversation with me first before because it would have been really hard not to have all these prejudged <laughs> notions. Yeah. Um, and the guy I got to know was a down to earth, normal, level headed, kind of a kind of a scaredy cat, very, very much awfulizing. Um yeah. a lot of shitty thoughts. And communicating with you while you were in the prison system was was some of the most therapeutic stuff for me because while you were going through RDAP, I was fresh out. RDAP was still fresh on my mind. And yeah. what was RDAP like for you? How long did it take for you to get into RDAP? Um, uh, well, because of my sentence was so short, I only had about a three month window to get in. Um, so right when I got in there, a class had started. So I was doing everything I could do to get into the next class or I wouldn't have got the time off. So I got in about three months after I got into prison. They, they, I, I came down to the wire. Someone, uh, pulled some strings for me with the doctor or whatever and uh, got me in. So I lucked out. So you got um, into RDAP. What did you think yeah. RDAP was going to be like? CJ, keep an eye on the time frame. Yeah, uh, I thought RDAP was going to be this crazy boot camp, like, uh, you know, <laughs> your, uh, the way they make it sound is so scary, especially from inmate.com, which if you guys are going in, you will learn all about inmate.com and it sometimes is very right or very wrong but uh i in this case it was very wrong and um i was scared to death i mean for the first week that rdap started i could hardly sleep i mean it was it was yeah i thought it was gonna be the worst experience ever tell people a little bit about what what rdap is for, for okay for, so for somebody that's watching right now that's thinking i want to get into i'm going to prison and I can't wait to get into RDAP to get a quick six, nine, 12 months off of my sentence. Yeah. Uh, did you, let, let me ask you this. Does this sound familiar to you? When you first thought of RDAP prior to getting into it, knowing it could reduce your sentence, did it seem like something like when you get a speeding ticket and then you go to take a driving class or you go to driving school, you sit there yeah. and do a bullshit test exact and you get some thing. time off? 
exact same thing. So being that's the kind of thought you had about it, and that's probably the idea a lot of other people had about it. Tell us what RDAP actually, I've told my version of RDAP a million times. What was RDAP like? What was a day-to-day -day RDAP like for you? Uh, God, man. RDAP for me was not, okay. It like, was, take it us was through the morning meeting and all, like, just take us through <laughs> okay. the whole day of, of RDAP. Well, let me just say it was horrible until you get used to it. Then it's amazing. But the my day was like, um, okay, so we'd wake up. I'd wake up at about uh, 6 o'clock, go to the chow hall, um, do the my assignment, which some people have cleaning the bathrooms, other have Others have uh, setting up the community room. I think you've probably touched on that before. Um, you got to set up all the chairs for everybody. There's certain tasks that you're assigned, um, depending on which uh, level you are um, in RDAP. And there was three in, in where I was at, um, or phases, sorry. I'm already starting to forget. But um, it's okay. <laughs> um, so then that I would we would do that. We'd go to community. We would talk about all of our issues. It was very strict, very regiment. You couldn't speak. You couldn't move. You had to, uh, you know, uh, stare straight forward. Uh, then you get yelled at by the doctors <laughs> about whatever, uh, you know, stupid stuff that went on in the unit. And then um, then you'd go and take your classes. So about ten thirty, we'd get out. We go to the chow hall, then we come back, and then we do our classes. Um, and we would uh, do that until about three, about three thirty, and then then the rest of the day is ours. And that was about it. What was the one thing about RDAP that you think most people are going to have the biggest challenge with? Um, it depends because I feel like a lot of people that watch your channel are either going to a low or a camp. Um, I think, especially if you're someone who's you know, had a God complex like me is just in it's obeying authority is like the hardest part. I feel like, and um, they make everybody equal there. So nobody's above anybody. So you, you got to throw your ego out the door. And I think a lot of people fail when, you know, they think they're smarter or better or, you know, try to shine um, and you let their ego, you know, take control. I think those are the people that are going to, that ultimately fail right off the bat. Um, so I think, go, go ahead. What about the process of holding each other accountable with the pull-ups? Well, system? yeah, that, that's hard. And then uh, your criminal mindset kicks in uh, uh, and you try and uh, <laughs> try and I, I really, that's the whole program. I mean, holding people accountable is, is, is a hard thing, but it, the, the program's made to design to, to, I feel like um, squeeze out all of these criminal mentalities that you may have to lie, cheat, to steal, whatever it is. And uh, when you try to do that, the, account the, the accountability process kicks in. And, um, you know, that was a real hard thing for me because I don't like conflict. So if Dan, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, has his, he doesn't have his shirt untucked and he's, you know, screaming down the hallways, um, it's annoying the hell out of me. Like just him screaming. But, you know, those are two accountabilities right there and i need to hold dan accountable to not only for the community but to better myself because i need to work on my conflict resolution and all that stuff um so and, how, do you, uh, how do you hold me accountable what's that process like well i go out and i fill it out an rsa i don't know how they did it where you were uh you, we fill out an rsa which is like a piece of paper and it and it's got two rows almost like a pros and a cons and uh i i say what what dan did how it made me feel and then you know the outcome of it and i go up to you and i go hey man i need to talk to you i need to hold you accountable and we sit down and we we, we talk about it so what if i'm like dude fuck off i don't want to hear this right now well not only is that another accountability but i have to use my tools in my chest <laughs> that rdap has given me to help with this conflict revolution or resolution um which is really hard for me because if someone comes up to me like yo what like you know i'm brought i'm brought up to you know like i i don't get in other people's business but art apps made to get into people's business so um it it, it uh yeah i mean it's just really hard i mean it, it really makes you a better person in that did you guys have to do pull-ups in the morning meeting where you'd have to basically yeah. call on somebody in front of everybody no we pull yeah there's like little pull-ups and stuff but they it was mostly just accountability. Oh, so yours was different than mine. Did you get pulled up at all for anything? 
Um, yeah, like stupid stuff, like just you know, leaving my towel in the shower, like stuff like that. Did you ever feel like you were not going to make it through the program? Every day, I think I was writing you like the day before graduation, and I was like, "They're going to kick me out. They're going to kick me out." But was there any incidents that actually happened that? No. Th okay, so nothing. Did you see people no, get removed I mean, from the program? Yeah, all the time, all the time. Now I'm saying that I didn't have any incidents myself. Um, there, which there wasn't, but in my mind, every day I thought I was getting kicked out. So, <laughs> so you, you, um, yeah, we, we used to talk about how much you awfulize. Yeah, because there's no control. You don't know what is going on. So for me, it was really hard. So um, for somebody but, watching right now that's wondering how people get kicked out of RDAP, what what are some things you've seen somebody get removed from the program for? Well, the most typical so things. I mean, not to be super blunt, but people having sex with each other, that's like the main reason why a lot of people got kicked out. So, so, um, no, so no having sex, that's one. <laughs> yeah. But we had, a, we had our, where I was, there was a lot of transgendered people. So I don't know if that makes it any better. I don't know, whatever. But uh, a lying, not? <laughs> <laughs> lying, stealing, uh, you know, uh, fighting, like starting fights. Um, there's a number of ways, but... You know, all the, the base level, like, immaturity, like, high school stuff that you would, you know, relate to high school, that's the stuff that people are getting kicked out for right off the bat in the easiest. So, yeah. So, going through RDAP now, what do you think was the number one thing that, you know, because obviously there's stuff in RDAP that you probably could have done without. What is something yeah. that you learned in RDAP that helps you with, with, issues you may have in the free world today um i guess uh really just stop and thinking well before it's like you know i was brought up on the internet so for me it's like i don't i don't have time to think especially running a business like i just i'm i act off emotion i i run with it and that's just what i do like it's just a very immature thing that i had um and also i never you know, being on the internet and doing what I did, it was like I reinforced that negative behavior. With RDAP, it's like the one thing I took away was to stop and think. So, you know, what are the consequences of doing this, you know, instead of just, you know, going 900 miles an hour into a wall and seeing what happens and hoping I'm surviving. Um, yeah, it's a, that's the one thing I took away from RDAP. When, when you graduated RDAP, how long before you actually got released to the halfway house? Oh, it was about a month. So I grad, yeah, it was about exactly a month. I went from graduation to the halfway house. Some guys left the day of graduation, which was awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, I left about a month after. Did you stay in the RDAP unit once you graduated? Yeah, I had the, the choice to move, but I I was already so routine for me. I wanted to stay there. Plus, I had a lot of friends, and I wanted to... Did you have a bottom oh, bunk? Yeah, I had a bottom. I had a Cadillac. Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard, it's hard to move away. That's the one good thing about the RDAP unit is because of the... It's high turnover because people are graduating every yeah. you know, couple of months. It doesn't take long to get to a bottom bunk where in a regular unit, you in a short sentence like what you and I had, uh, yeah. you may never see a bottom bunk. No, no, those are that you don't want to give those up. Plus, it's really quiet and really clean in the RDAP unit. So, how much time did you get off for RDAP? Just six months. So you got six months off for RDAP plus your good time on thirty months. Yeah. And then you were given how much halfway house time? Six months. Six months. Uh, yeah. What was the halfway house like for you? Um, the worst experience of my entire life. Worse <laughs> than pretrial. Worse than anything. It was what, horrible. What about it was so horrible? Well, it's ran by children, so uh, that that part was uh, horrible. I mean, I did make mistakes in the halfway house. I did drink, and I was called back from uh, home confinement, um, which is my fault and was a horrible decision that I made. Was that but, the time you called me? Yeah, that was about that time I called you, freaking out. Um, but besides that... Uh, there was a few members that were a part of the RDAP staff that that did uh, TDAP. They were amazing. They really helped me with my anxiety. And um, But as far as the actual living situation and the day-to-day -day, um, living in the halfway house was one of the worst experiences of my life. Just 
got to but every halfway house is different. Everybody's got different experiences with where they go. So I don't want to freak anybody out. So the prison you were at, what you were in Texas, correct? Yeah, Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont, Texas, at the camp. Yeah. What? No, no, no. I was at the low. Oh, I'm sorry, you were at the low. What yeah. was the prison? What was there to do at the prison? Was there sports? Was there leagues? Was there activities? Was there libraries? Um, there really wasn't much. I spent most of my time working out and going to the library. Um, the library was like my, that was my spot. Um, but, uh, there, there was sports, there was baseball teams, there's, um, you know, workout cars, there's, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, it just depends on how you want to do your time and, uh, you want to do it positively or do you want to, you know, sit and watch TV all day and, you know, gamble and be a loser, you know, you can do, <laughs> you, that, you can do that. But so, your, you your know. overall freedom within the prison, as long as you were obviously yeah. inside of the prison, you could go wherever you wanted. You could do, you could go and do whatever you wanted. Um, the difference between a camp and a low, uh, which I know you, you probably discussed, is that we had 10 minute moves on the hour. So uh, you couldn't move, uh, you know, during, during that hour until they let everybody out at, on the hour. Um, but the good thing about that, I mean, it, it seems like a pain in the ass at first, but it really makes you structure your day and it actually makes your day 10 times shorter than if you're at a camp where you're just free roaming around, it could go to the library whenever you want. So, um, that it seems like a negative, but it's actually a plus. So 10 minute moves, it means at the top of every hour, you've got 10 minutes to go wherever you want to go. So if you want to go to the yard, if you yeah. want to go to the library, if you want to go to the movie room, you got 10 minutes to get there. And then once you're there, you're stuck there for the remaining of that hour. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty, you could pretty much do what you wanted to do as long as, as long as you understood the system, get yeah. into the halfway house. What was that like compared to? to your freedom within the prison aside from being able to go home on weekends eat regular food but the actual halfway house versus prison i i would have just stayed in prison to be honest with you it was that bad what did it, it look was, like the, what was the like my halfway house was, was horrible too i haven't met anybody that's had a good play had a good experience in the halfway house yeah i they should just shut that whole program down to be honest with you um but the for my where mine was i know yours was like in a shack or something mine was like a rundown uh like motel six from like the 50s or something so it was uh i was actually at two of them there's a men's one and then there's a co co-ed one i was i went between both of them depending on how many people were there um i preferred the all men's one because there was less drama obviously you guys wanted to you know, sex. yeah, <laughs> and there was a lot of drug use at the co-ed one where the men's one, it was very chill. It didn't seem like prison. It just seemed like everybody was miserable together. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it, yeah. So the co-ed one, I had experience with both the co-ed one. I would suggest staying away. If you can go to a men's one, go to a men's one. I'd suggest staying away from a co-ed one. You know, obviously the temptations, you haven't seen girls in a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot less drama. And you were in the halfway house six months. How long were you there before you got a job? <clears throat> oh, I got a job about two weeks in. And what so, were you doing? Uh, I worked at a nectarine orchard. So I I really would just drive around and uh, help with like office work sometimes and just keep bums out of the nectarine orchard. <laughs> so, yeah. Was this, was this a job that you knew somebody or was this a... You, you yeah, uh, I, I, someone who knew somebody that knew somebody type of deal. Okay. Um, they, they have jobs you can do in the halfway house. They have different like programs because you either need to volunteer, which they call it, which is basically slave labor or get a job if you want to go home on the weekends and stuff. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and just got a job cause that's what gives you the most, um, you know, most perks, I guess. So, yeah, I just went and got a job. They paid me minimum wage, and uh, it got me out of the halfway house from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it was great. How long were you at the halfway house? I mean, how far away did you live from the halfway house? How far was your, your home? Oh, I lived three hours away, three and a half hours away. So were you able to go home on the weekends? Yeah, it just wasn't really worth it, you know. I just, you know, I treated it like prison. It was just a grind, you know, just grind it out. Whatever I got to do to get to my my ultimate goal which was to be home in my bed without worrying about this place 
So I know when I got to prison, and I hear this from a lot of other people when they got to prison, there's a rumor when you get there that as soon as you get to the halfway house, they let you on home confinement. You you're going to go right to home <laughs> confinement. Is that true? No, that's definitely not true. That's definitely not true. They want to take that 25% out of your check, um, and that's before taxes. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> so how long were you in the halfway house before you actually got to go to home confinement? Three months. Three months? Maybe three, three and a half months, maybe, yeah. So yeah. home confinement, was it? Was there an ankle monitor? Was it? But, uh, it seemed like it. You had to be by the phone at basically all times. It's basically uh, You didn't have home to wear an ankle monitor? No, I didn't have to wear an ankle monitor. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's they, were gonna, they were going to put an app on my phone, but... That's what uh, I had. Yeah. Guardian. So, yeah, they, they just... They, I guess they gave up that program or something, and they just started calling. And they would call you just randomly. How often no, would they need... call you a day? Was it was it really that often? Um, yeah, it's just like probation. You know, you you start real aggressive, and then you prove yourself, and then it slowly tickers off. You know, and then it would be like six six p.m. They would call, ten p.m. They would call, and like seven thirty in the morning they'd call. So while you're on home confinement, you you could go to work. Yeah, you could go to work, but you'd have to put in your work pass. Um, and then if you needed a gym pass and all that type of stuff, you, you, anything you need to do, like you, you just fill out a pass for it. And then your, um, case manager, just like you have in prison, will, um, sign off on it. And then you're good for the week. And you'd have to give them that pass almost like a week in advance though. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah. very scheduled. If you want to go to, it's not like you just decide, I'm going to go get a haircut today. This stuff oh, has yeah. to be thought about way ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Because if they call and you don't answer, it's it's a wrap. Big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you made it through. So now you're on federal uh, probation, federal supervised or su supervised release. Um, yeah. How how much supervised release were 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 you given? They give me three years supervised release. Um, you know, I'm trying to you know go through this without a hiccup, um, and uh, try and petition. You know the court early to get off i'm probably trying to do that when i've got a year and a half in how far are I'm you about, in now seven months now okay so um you know just it's another grind which just uh you, i gotta you know stay focused and just because they're not on me 24 7 or you know what i mean it's uh i can't get complacent i gotta just keep my eye on the goal which is to ultimately get out of this swamp and uh move on with my life so how much prior to you going to prison how much did you know needed to go into personal narratives character reference letters prepping for your psr uh did, did your attorney <clears throat> prep you on any of that no the the only time i heard about that stuff was from you um i i had i was at the end i was already i was i had already gotten my um well, you know, when they tell you which prison you're going to and, or your right. self-surrender package or whatever it is. Um, I had already gotten that by the time we, we really got into talking. So I, you know, if I had that, I feel like it may have helped me to maybe knock off maybe a year, maybe um, six months, whatever it may have been. But you, um, didn't, you didn't do any, you didn't build a mentor network. You weren't out doing community service. You weren't doing any of these other things that that we have a lot of our guys that get into it early enough uh, working on. Like there's a few guys in the room right now that actually uh, quite a few guys in the room that have said, Hey, do you, what's up? I missed their call or I missed their message. But these are guys that ended up receiving like probation that were looking at the same type of sentences you are looking at. And the only difference is, is how much work they put in prior uh, that they didn't know about going through when you went through it. Yeah, that's an every, everyday grind you need to, you need to do, which unfortunately there wasn't anybody like you that, you know, there was no resource for me um, at the time. Um, I did do the character reference letters, but just like everybody else, I make the mistake of not taking accountability. I have everybody writing me, writing, saying, he didn't mean, you know, writing letters saying, he didn't mean to. He's such a good guy. I don't believe what the media is saying. I'm not, you know, what I should be doing is like accepting responsibility actually you know focusing on these issues that i had like going to psychologists like really figuring out like the root of why i'm um may have done what i have done and you know really showed progress of what you know trying to figure out why i am the way that i am and why i did that and to stop it from ever happening again 
But I went the other route of feeling sorry for myself, eating, getting fat, drinking, doing blow, just sitting there like everybody's against me and uh, hoping, you know, rolling the dice, hoping for the best. So, yeah, I think uh, the way you're teaching these guys <laughs> how to go is a little bit better. You, you told me you spoke to quite a few guys in prison that actually hired prison consultants. Um, yeah, was there, a, was there a lot. Any, did, you, did you talk to anybody that had any good or bad experiences with, with prison consultants and, and why they felt the experiences were good or bad? Uh, everybody I talked to had a bad experience. Um, I don't want to say any names or anything like that, but, uh, a lot of people, was it? (laughs) No, no, no. I, uh, I, you know, we, we knew the same person you were, you were at, um, the low with him. Um, and I was in RDAP with him actually. So that was kind of crazy. That's how small, yeah, Canon, that's how small the, the, the (laughs) federal prison community is. Everybody knows each other. Um, uh, but yeah, I, everybody that I talked to basically got robbed. Um, and they spent quite a bit of money. Thousands and thousands. I mean, their last dollar. I mean, you know, helping their parents or, you know, begging their family, their friends, their parents for money to pay for these prison consultants that ultimately just stole from them. Um, so, you know, which you helped me for free. <laughs> so I was like, well, you, know. you just can't tell yeah. everybody that. Hunter. Well, this, I know. I'm sorry. But Look, this guys, is I didn't know what I was doing when I helped yeah, for free. I was before. out of prison like a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Dan, yeah, Dan wasn't even Dan then. He was an art app Dan then. But, um, you know, a lot of these guys were just taking advantage of. So, um, you know, I, I did tell a lot of people about you. And, um, you know, but all these guys are, Everybody's dragging their feet on the ground in prison. So, well, we're about almost an hour in this video, so we're going to wrap up in a second. So, okay, if you were to give some advice to somebody, Hunter, right now that was getting ready to go through this and not to sit here and and push my services, but if somebody was thinking about looking for a prison consultant based on some of the things that you heard from people that that they wish they had checked into earlier, because you said a lot of people got burned by their prison consultant, yeah, what, what advice would you give to somebody other than? It's easy to say we'll go talk to Dan, but yeah. But what what do you think they ended up not knowing before they hired a prison consultant? I mean everything. I mean without. I mean without like someone just sitting there like actually. Sorry, I'm just knocked over something. Um, who without someone to talk to like you or a prison consultant, someone who's actually been in that situation. There's really, there's nothing, there's no resource for you to like, uh, you know, bring you back to reality. So, so when someone like Dan is there to just be like, dude, listen, you're not going to get raped. It's not that bad. There's, you know, just gives you a lot, a layout of actually what reality is and, um, the, the path you need to take to, 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 to get your sentence down, um, you know, there really isn't any resource there. So well, I wish, you know, Dan, you were in the position. I mean, you gave me a lot of good information, but now you're like, you know, the per- now that you've actually, you know, you've gotten everything set up. Um, I think, you know, if I was to go through this situation again, it would be no doubt. I'd, I, I, I couldn't do the, do it with, without your resources. I mean, or somebody in your position, I think um, mentally, it's needed, but to, like you said, these guys getting probation. I mean, <clears throat> just just knowing the little thing, like uh, you know, taking responsibility. That's like the it's one thing that nobody even thinks about. So hearing that and knowing that it actually works, um, you know, is something huge. So not to you know, well, I appreciate that. Not I've... to stroke you off anymore, but you know, <laughs> sorry, stroke away. Uh, <laughs> stroke your ego. Uh, you know, you did help me tremendously. Like without just, just, just the the talking is, uh, yeah, it could I, put a a lot of what we do. It. I think comes down to is as much as it is consulting and preparing somebody for prison. It really is. It, it really becomes coaching. Um, a yeah. lot of hours spent on the phone, explaining the process. Not this is the process of prison, but how you're able to take control of this and how. This isn't yes. going to, was this the worst thing that's ever happened to you in your life? Um, maybe the pretrial part, but the actual prison experience, was it the worst no, thing that's ever happened no, to you? No, Absolutely was, not. No, of course not. It was probably, I mean, it was, honestly, I had a great prison experience, which is like weird to say, I guess. But it was, you know, I, I don't regret going to prison 
I regret the pretrial and doing the things I did, I guess. But well, that's because um, you decided to do things with your time while you were there. I mean, you told me you were spending time with with, with Cannon Brian. Yeah, right? great yeah. dude. You know, this is a guy that I spent time with in Florida. Graduated RDAP in Florida, transferred to the camp in Texas. Screwed up in <laughs> yeah, the camp. Screwed up. Lost his RDAP. Went to the low where Hunter was at. Retook RDAP with Hunter. Lost quite a bit of time because he had to redo the program. But yep. uh, needless to say, look, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be setbacks. Uh, someday when Hunter's off probation, we are going to have some conversations that yeah. he has called me in, in moments of freak out, wondering if he was going to get in trouble for stuff that blew my mind. Uh, so I can't <laughs> wait to have some of these conversations. But uh, now that you're yeah. on the other side, you're, you're doing what you need to do. What's what's next for Hunter Moore? What, what are your plans? We know you're working on a book. Yeah, well, they won't let me put my book out. So. Right, they won't let you put it out yet, but it doesn't mean yeah. you're not working on it. No, so I, I wrote my book in prison, so that was great. I mean, I, there's no way I could have done that without going to prison. Like, I mean, just the time and the sitting there focused and, you know, it was uh, very therapeutic for me. Um, uh, other than that, you know, I'm starting a new company. Um, obviously, it's going to be in a completely different direction than what landed me in prison. Can, but can you, tell, um, can you tell us anything about it or not yet? <laughs> I, I can't. I got. I have an investor. I have an NDA. I can't. Okay. I can't really do that. I'm just glad somebody is giving me some money to start something new and not, you know, judge me on my past. But um, yeah, I got a lot of. I got a million things going on, and um, you know, I'm going to Hawaii and uh, on Saturday. So you know, so you're on pretrial it, probation. You got permission to go to Hawaii. Yeah, um, so it's it great. It's great. I mean, honestly, it, it's. Uh, Besides, like, the horrible stuff that happened, like, yeah, it's been, uh, I don't know, it's been a good ride. I'm not going to lie. Did you ever imagine good. you'd be at this point when you're getting ready to go into prison? Did this feel like a forever and a day away? <laughs> Dude, I would, like, I remember watching your video and being like, I fucking hate that guy. Like, he's all <laughs> smug, sitting there, like, out of prison in shape. I'm, I'm fat, eating in and out like, just drinking a beer, like, just miserable. And I hated you for it. Like, I, I envied you. And now it's like, wow, well, I you get it. Right you know? I, <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people watching right now probably relate very well with that statement that are thinking, I can't wait until I'm on the other side. No matter what it is, I can't wait till I'm there. And I was yeah. very jealous of anybody that I knew that went to prison that was already out. It was like, fuck, man, I just want to be where they are right now. So I think that's a that's a true, honest statement that everybody absolutely uh, relates with. Before we let Hunter go, yeah. guys, is there any is there any questions on Facebook, CJ? Is there anybody that has a question for Hunter? Because um, he's yeah, been going incognito for a them. while. So if you want to ask a question, <laughs> I'm ask going now back to my cave. Your peace. Go back to his cave. Yeah. <laughs> He put on his uh, his finest outfit for us. I appreciate it, Hunter. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> no, man. This is this is. I was hoping you weren't gonna do something retarded. This is exactly how you are. So this is the person. We <laughs> yeah, want I mean. Show. So guys, I appreciate you all for joining us today, um, Hunter Moore. Really, the only spot you're on social media right now is where is on uh, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Um, I don't. You guys don't need to find me. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I don't, I don't need to. Go, go search Hunter. Yeah. Keep an eye out for his book. I know there's a website for your book where they can keep track on it. So when it does pop up, was it? Uh, yeah. No, I took that down too. Oh, you took it I'm down. totally okay. under. So I'm totally a Hobbit. Dude. He's it's he's a, a Hobbit right now. So once yeah. he does resurface and this info is ready, um, I'm, I'm I'm hoping I have a role in Hunter's book. So we will definitely. Have Hunter back on after probation when we can have a little bit of a different type of a conversation. Um, yes. Hunter, I appreciate you joining me finally. I'm of glad we got, we got to do this. And guys, uh, if you haven't already done so and you've got questions, you've got concerns, you're not sh you're not sure where to start, as you can see, Hunter's his own success story. Success for everybody is a little bit different, but it all starts with making positive decisions today. And that could mean something as simple as picking up your phone and giving me a call, which is right here on the screen, 509-434-4695, or shoot me an email, rdapdan at gmail.com. If you want to get put onto our text notification list, this way you get updated notifications when we're getting ready to go live. It's also on the top of your screen. All you need to do is text the word YouTube to 76626. That will put you on our notification list. Uh, Hunter, again, I thank you very much, my man. It was a pleasure of course, having thank you. On. you. 
Uh, guys, as always, people helping people, community is method, one day at a time. All right, That's everybody, right. have a great week. And Hunter, again, thank you. I'll talk to everybody soon. Peace. All right, thanks. Bye.